exactly a year ago now that I made my color block midi dress on my knitting machine, which was one of the first bigger projects that I ever made on my knitting machine. And it's still like to this day, my absolute pride and joy. I absolutely love it. I thought since it's been a year, I'm gonna remake it. At the time I made a couple other ones kind of similar to that, but changing up. One of them is actually hanging just behind me there um, just because I'm prepping it to send it out to someone because someone bought it, which is amazing. But yeah, at the time I made three dresses in total and then I got really bored of it. The thing about these dresses is they take a really long time, but also the yarn that I'm using is completely unfit for my machine. So it just takes a lot longer and it takes a lot of muscle to work the machine up and down because it's so tight and the machine really is struggling. I wanna say last time I broke a few needles. I haven't got any extra needles for this, but I think I'll just have to take some out from the ends if I do end up breaking some. So not the ideal project, but the outcome is so amazing that I can't help it. I'm gonna need to make another one. So the yarn that I have been using, I buy on eBay and it is this. Blushy Colours Cake Yarn. It's made out of 40% acrylic, 40% polyamide and 20% mohair. And the yarn is made out of four strands, I want to say. Yeah, four strands, so you can maybe see here. So it is really, really thick. My machine is mainly for fine to medium knits, but this probably would be better if you had a chunky machine, not gonna lie. Now I forgot my instructions written down. So I got six of these balls of yarn, which will hopefully be enough for the original dress. Each of the panels for the main body is one section of this yarn. So if I have five sections per front and back panel, then there'll be one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and then I have two left for the arms, which is perfect. The construction of the dress is super, super simple, really straightforward. It is all made out of rectangles. So two big, long rectangles for the front and the back, and then two smaller ones for the arms. So yeah, not really much. I can say about that. I have mocked up a little bit of a design just because I won't be using the white in this. So I'm just doing three colors, which is obviously slightly different to the ones I've done before. So I'm gonna do blue, green, pink, blue, green, pink, and then the arm's gonna start with blue. I do still want to make it into a color block design. So I've kind of just given like a bit of a side view so I could place exactly which colors I want to sit opposite so the color blocking makes sense. So this is how the side view is gonna look. So one side's gonna start with the blue, at the bottom and then one side's going to start with the green at the bottom and then the dress can be worn either way which I think is quite nice to have that flexibility. I just now need to calculate how many rows of each colour I need to knit in order for it to be even. So I know that for this size of the dress for this length which is kind of midi I'm gonna need to knit a total of 355 rows and because I have six stripes I'm just gonna divide the 355 55 by 6, which is 59. So every, I need to write this down. For the arms, I need to knit a total of 135. I already done that, divided by three, that's fine. So each needs to be 45 rows. Okay, perfect. I think I'm ready then. I just need to crack on. I like to faff around before starting a project on my knitting machine, especially when it's a big one because I'm kind of <laughs> like trying to put it off, but I can't put it off. So let's just get on with it. cast on I'm on the highest tension that is possible on my machine and I'm ready to do the first row which is always always the scariest so let's do it together oh my god it's not moving I don't remember this being so hard. 
do not do this with your machine. This is a terrible, terrible thing to show you because you should not be straining your machine like this. Okay, that was crazy. Um, I think I probably cast it on a bit too tight, but yeah, that, I'm scared to do the second row now. Before I do that, I'm just gonna cast on my weights. So I'll pop this on and then I have four of these weights. So I'm gonna put two on the metal rail and then two just on the outer edge to make sure that nothing gets loose. I'm so scared. I do have one needle that always gets stuck. I should really get it changed out and kind of just pull it. Okay, second row was a lot smoother, but I am worried that I have messed up two of my needles because they got stuck. Which, to be honest, like I said, I expected that to happen, so... moving we're moving i have always said when you're working on a knitting machine and you're working on a project where you have to make a lot of rows like in my case i'm gonna need 355 rows just for the front panel i always say put on some loud music because there's just something about the grinding of the knitting machine if you hear that repetitively then you go insane so i'm gonna do that and crack on with my front panel alexa Play C Matt. Play songs by C Matt from Lion Spotify. either front or back doesn't really matter but it actually was a lot easier than the initial start so that is good when i was casting on i was really worried that it wouldn't be wide enough because it looked really small on the machine but i just trusted my instructions and i would say it's definitely wide enough it just always like curls in on the sides which is really misleading but if you then like roll it out to there where it's going to be attached it will fit just fine um so yeah that turned out pretty good. The colours look so good. Uh, they do remind me a little bit of those ice creams, you know, the, the chocolate, strawberry and vanilla ice creams. I'm just gonna do the back panel as well and the arms and then we can put it all together. I feel bad for not really showing you the process of actually knitting this, but it is so boring. I'm just going back and forth and changing out the colors and going back and forth. So not super interesting to show you guys. I'm also so sorry for the lighting situation in my videos. It's really, really getting on my nerves now. I have told myself that once we hit 10K subscribers, I'm gonna finally allow myself to buy a proper camera. For some reason, I've given myself that as a limit and as a goal. I don't really know why. So until then, it's unfortunately gonna have to continue being just my phone. Uh, so if you are watching this and you've not subscribed, please, please, please subscribe to my channel so I can finally buy a better camera because I'm actually losing my mind. I should just like go ahead and buy one, but for some reason I had to give myself this goal. It would just make my life so much easier because I have really been neglecting my TikTok account because I've been filming all of my YouTube stuff on my phone. Whereas I think if I had a camera, I could film my TikToks on my phone at the same time as my YouTube videos so it would be so much easier to maintain both platforms but I just like to make my life a lot harder than it needs to be. All right, I have finished all the panels and I've just laid them out here so I can show you whereabouts I'm gonna attach them and like what steps I usually do first. So obviously these are the body panels and then those are the arms. And what I do first is I will attach the shoulder seams and I'm kind of just gonna try it on as I go to make sure that enough room is left for the head to go through. And then when those are attached, I then attach the arms. And a good trick for when you're attaching arms is I really really like to stretch the arm out so I can get as big of like an armhole as possible especially because I just have rectangles here that kind of creates a bit of a shape for the arm so then once I've done that like once this is attached here all the way to then there I will then just finish the arms by attaching them on the sides there obviously I can just carry on the same thread all the way down to here and then I just attach the body panels I'll probably start from the arm and I'll go down obviously then at that point I can fold the two sides together and then it should literally be done the whole 
attaching and seaming part is probably what takes the longest because going all the way down this dress just takes forever and it's really tedious there is a way that you can do it on your knitting machine as well but i don't really like doing that i prefer doing it by hand because i can 100 percent make sure that everything is attached properly nothing will come undone and i also don't find it that time saving doing it on the knitting machine because i still need to manually cast on the two sides and then i need to manually cast it off together which i don't really see the point in that so i'm just gonna do this by hand which will probably take like three or four hours The shoulder seams are done there you go so i'm just gonna try it on yeah i think that's definitely enough room here i also need to take into account that i will block this and i will steam it so this will get even wider and wider because the weight of the arms when they'll be attached so i think for now this is perfect The arms are all finished now as well so let's give it another try on there's like a lot of room under here which is perfect so now we just need to attach the sides which is going to take the longest but it is already looking so cute i can't wait to see how the side looks like the color block design i think that will look really nice when it comes together but yeah almost done the sides of the dress are done as well i now just need to sew in all the loose ends and then i'm finished <laughs> It's just time to block this so i've got my blocking bowl and i'm just going to pop it in the sink uh, i need to put some fabric softener in this is really where the magic happens it will just help the stitches relax and also all the seaming will just relax so much more Now you can obviously dry your finished piece after you've blocked it using towels and kind of like getting rid of the water that way but I'm too lazy to do that and instead I put mine on the spinning cycle in my washing machine. I'll show you what settings I put it on. So I just pop it on the spin and drain and then I change the spin to be as low as possible which for me is 600 so just so it's not like super intense and you know you're a bit more gentle on your piece and then I'm literally just gonna pop that on so yesterday i just let the dress dry and then today i can do the final step which is to steam this i like to especially steam around the edges where i've seamed everything together so especially around the arm it's gonna loosen everything the sides are gonna drop a little bit and then i'm just gonna very roughly go across the dress as well just to make everything drop and i like to start with the piece inside out and then once i've done that i'm just gonna very roughly go over it the right side out as well so i'm just gonna take my steam basically and go along the edges and you can also really feel the texture of the yarn change completely like it will get so much softer also i know people might get funny with me hanging my dress up on a hanger i know it, it can sometimes leave some indents into the dress itself i've never really had that big of an issue with it which is why it's still on a hanger but obviously just be aware that the way that you are steaming and blocking your pieces is often how it will dry as well <laughs> I can finally show you the finished result. I haven't actually tried this on yet myself, so it'll be a surprise for all of us. I'm literally so in love with this. It turned out so, so, so nice. I can't believe how quickly I made it as well, considering that I hadn't really made one in like a year. Yeah, I didn't think I'd be able to finish this in a day, not including the steaming and drying process, obviously, but it is so, so cute. It's so soft. I really love how the colors came out as well and the sort of color block contrasting stitches on the side. And it's got the perfect vibes for spring, which is great as well. I think I also now really want to make another one of the proper color block dresses because i have a few like random bunches of colors now laying around from 
like other projects that I've been doing. So I think I could make another version of this just in a different colorway, which I think would be absolutely incredible. Because for these, I literally use a different color for everything, I'm pretty sure. Apart from the arms, I think I use some of these in the dress itself. But yeah, this one's a really nice one as well. Just a different interpretation. I really hope you enjoyed this video and kind of gave you a bit of an insight into my sort of knitting machine process. Yeah, I'm so, so, so chuffed with this outcome and I hope you like it too. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.